In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to tie a table component to a chart component. Now, a table component is a selector component that allows you to display a whole series of aggregate or summarized information, click on that information, and see the detail behind that. And these types of components are typically used to display very simple sets of um, information on a dashboard and then see the detail behind them. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll start by looking at the Excel model that we're going to use. Now you'll notice here you have two distinct tables. You have a table here that shows the summarized information. For example, I've got net revenues, but I've got Q1 to Q2 average, Q3 to Q4 average, and a variation. So that's one table, and it shows a very high-level summary view. Then I've got another table here that's kind of separated by a border, and it shows detailed information, that is, the actual numbers for Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And then you also notice that I've got a set of cells here that are highlighted in yellow. These are being reserved for the column chart. The column chart that we're going to use on the dashboard is going to read off of this. Now here's the idea behind this scenario. We're going to tie our table component to this set of data here. Then we're going to set the source data to this set of data. Now the source data is essentially the output data, the data that's going to be grabbed out of here like this and then moved up here and pasted the values. Essentially Excelsius does this, right? So it grabs this data or the data that you're selecting and then it moves it up here. Now does it do it exactly like I just did it? No, it does it in the background but it's essentially the same thing. So the idea again is when you select a uh, item in a table component it identifies which row you just selected and then it moves it up to a certain place that you define. So we're going to set the source data as this data. And then we're going to set the insert in uh, reference to here. Okay, it all sounds Greek, but it's going to make sense here in a second. Let's start by importing our Excel model here. So we're just going to select the book that we've got it in. Now, selectors, we're going to bring in a table selector first. The table selector, we're going to double click on it to get to the properties window. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the display data. This is the data that you want the user to actually see in the table component. Now, we're going to basically come over here and say you want them to see the summary date data. So we're going to take the summary table, select this whole thing, and press OK. Now you'll notice here that in real time, Crystal Excelsius kind of pushed this out to you. OK, so now you can see your data. Now, source data. This is the data I was just talking about. The output data. The data that we want to feed the column chart with. So, we're going to set that as this. The source data is this table right here. Okay? Press OK. Okay, perfect. You see a cell reference here. So, that's good. That means it took. Now, we're going to say insert in. The insert in reference is this. We're going to insert the data that it pulls out of this source data into these series of cells. Press OK. And again, you see the reference here, so that's perfect. Now that we have our table components set up, let's go ahead and add a column chart here. Go to Components, add a column chart to our canvas. And again, the idea is to tie this column chart to the output that's going to come out of this table component. So we'll double click on the column chart component to get to the properties window. We'll delete the titles here. We don't need those titles for right now. And let's go to data range. The data range cell reference icon, we'll just click on it. And then we're going to go ahead and select the range of the cells that's going to hold our column chart data. Now that's these yellow cells here. Now, just keep in mind, there's nothing special about these particular cells. I could have easily made the three cells up here or the four cells up here uh, or even you know off to the side here. I usually just try to keep it close to my data set so I, I have a small area to work with. So I'll just select those and press OK. And one last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually um, category access labels. I want my labels to be down here so I'm going to click the cell reference icon and I'll just select these things as my labels and now I got good labels here. Alright so now I've got my table component set up to output to those yellow cells and I've got my chart component to read from the yellow cells so everything should work perfectly so I'm going to click on preview just to make sure and as I select each particular line item you'll notice the chart changes. Very good. 
Now there's one last thing that I'm going to want to do here before I make this final, and that's lock down this header row. Now, in almost every table component that I've created, I've had one or more rows that are meant to be header rows. That is, they don't have real data in them. But yet, this table component allows me to select it. So for example, I can select this header row. The problem with that is that the chart goes blank. It's not really real data. I, I shouldn't be able to select it. But there's a really easy way to lock this down or select which rows you'd like the user not to be able to select. So let's go to design mode here. One last time, double click on the table component. Go to the properties window. Under the behavior tab, there's a section here called row selectability. Now for each row, as you can see, you can go through every single row that there that exists in this table component. For each row, I can select whether it's selectable or not. So row one, I want to say not selectable. So I'm going to uncheck that. And that's basically it. Row one, not selectable. Hit print preview. Now you can see here, I'm not allowed to select row one. So that's it. That's the basics of tying a column chart to a table component. And there's probably a hundred different fancy things you can do from here, uh, but these are the fundamentals.